In this session, we're going to cover what's new in the CMDB and CSDM for the San Diego release. On this session, we're going to cover the product evolution, the overview of major new features, major new enhancements, and minor enhancements and features. From a CMDB point of view, we've been at it for quite some time. And in San Diego, what we're covering today, we've got some new items as well. I'll go over it in detail. So today we're going to cover some major enhancements, uh, mostly on the dynamic rules capability that we added to IRE. We're going to cover the CMDB workspace version two, which is available in the store as well. But in the San Diego release, we will be shipping the CMDB workspace as well, a new version, version two. In the CMDB data manager, we will be talking about a new feature for dependent CI processing. We're going to be covering service graph connectors update in this session. I just want to note that the Service Graph Connector program has new things being added all the time. Plus, there are changes to the roadmap based on the availability of vendor assistance and also testing. We will be covering the IRA domain separation support, which has been improved in this release. IATTL additional features. The CSDM product model population capabilities, which are to really set us up for product-centric management of IT within the next year or so, and the new application service type called Calculated, which has been added in the user experience for application services in San Diego. So first we'll cover the new features. So the major new feature that we added is a dynamic IRE rules, which basically decides what value to choose when importing data from multiple sources based on the value itself. And so when you're creating a new rule, you will see a new option to create dynamic reconciliation rules, and you'll see on the right. When you select that option and you set that up, IRE will choose from the data source based on its value. So the re first reported value is an option, most reported. So I like that one because if you have, let's say four sources with the same kind of attribute, you can say, hey, let's use the one that everybody reports on the most. So three out of four will win. The last reported largest value or smallest value. So now we're investigating exactly what the data values are to choose which source to use in each attribute. So there's nothing new you need to do. All you have to do is basically install San Diego. And when you get that, you'll now have these new dynamic reconciliation rules to choose from. Next, we're going to cover some major enhancements. The first major enhancement is the CMDB Workspace version 2. This is in the store, but it's also shipped in San Diego. In the San Diego release, we are going to be supporting the new user experience that the platform is seeing, and we're getting great reviews on that platform update. Things like dark mode are enabled, and uh, the user experience really looks great in dark mode. We're always making improvements in how the experience works for all of our customers and all the different personas. In this one, of course, we're addressing the personas of the CMDB. The next major enhancement that we have is in the CMDB data manager. The CMDB data manager is relatively new. We introduced it in Rome, and we now have the ability to set up identification rules within the CI class manager. So when you go in there, you can basically set up the identification rule on whether something is a independent CI or it is a dependent CI. So what you're able to see here is that when you set it up as an independent CI that exists on its own and it has no repercussion from anything else being created or deleted. So it will exist on its own. It has its own life cycle. However, now we have a, a dependent CI, and this is a case where we have a memory module. The memory module exists as part of a piece of hardware in this case. And so what you see here is it's dependent on its hardware. If the hardware that it, that memory module is in goes away, then the dependent CI will also go away. And the way we set that up is that the dependent relationships which tie these two together to say that memory modules are dependent on their hardware that is set up also in the CI class manager. Now, the neat thing about this is that this feature will work across anything that you already have set up appropriately in this way. And historically, we didn't really have the ability to process those dependent CIs. In this release, we do. 
Now the ZMDB data manager does this for two of the three different types of rules you can set up in data manager. It sets it up for the deletion and archive rule only. Now, if you have those uh, retirement, we don't process it for retirements yet. It will be added as a feature in a future release. So just keep that in mind. Retirement doesn't necessarily mark retirement for all the dependent CIs at this moment. This is something that automatically is there. I would encourage you to look at your dependency rules and when you're upgrading and setting up CMDB data manager, just note that those dependencies will start being processed. This will eliminate a lot of the problems that customers had with Orphan CIs. The computer might have been deleted or archived, but maybe the memory modules had not. And so that problem will be addressed going forward. So on the different types of service graph connectors we see, I'll start out with the cloud one. We're implementing a number of different cloud service graph connectors here. AWS is the first one that's coming out and it's currently in early access. So we plan to release that soon. Uh, so stay tuned to the store. And if you need access, uh, please let us know and you can gain access. The next up that we have is the Google Cloud and Azure, which are planned for later this year. We're working with customers and with those vendors to ensure that we actually implement them based on best practices. The next area is software server and networking information. We plan to come out with a new connector for Apogee, Palo Alto Networks, Cisco Thousand Eyes, and Kong. And the observability monitoring area, we have App Dynamics already in early access and beta. And we also have LightStep, which is also early access. LightStep is available already in the store. If you do have LightStep, you can go ahead and try that out with your LightStep deployment. Planned is the Elastic, as well as New Relic. Nothing new in the endpoint IT and asset management space. In the manufacturing IoT telecom area, we have CyberX, Radiflow, and Clarity planned for later this year. And nothing new in security. The roadmap is quite fungible. We will work with vendors and customers to be able to prioritize these more dynamically. And because they're released in the store, we're able to release them outside the family release schedule. Next, we'll cover the minor features and enhancements. And the first minor enhancement is to the domain separation support when you're using IRE. Now this includes, of course, any service graph connectors that we just walked over, they use IRE as well. The key thing here is that traditionally we haven't supported a different domain for each connector, or we would be able to only support one domain. So when you're running collection from different sources, we can only target one specific domain. That was limiting for MSPs. That was limiting also for customers that use domain separation to support, let's say, different subsidiaries in their business model. Now, what we do is we can add that domain information when importing data from those various domains. And we also adhere to the rules of domain separation. So let's say something comes in in the parent domain and it has access to the child or a different domain. Then we pay attention to those rules when the information is coming in and it's now used within the system. So domain separation is a big deal for a lot of our MSPs. And this kind of tightens up our support for domain separation as a whole and really adhering to the domain separation rules when you set up domain separation. I just want to note that domain separation is a separately licensed feature within the platform. And uh, this you'll need to go to the domain separation business unit in order to learn more. To enable this, you need to set a property for the IRE to true, which is platform domain separation enabled. Now, the key thing to remember is if you already have CIs created that have not come in under the domain separation rule, then the results will be undeterministic as the domain each CI might relive in may not be set up appropriately. So we really encourage customers to enable this only on Zboot when they're studying a fresh environment and collecting information from scratch from these sources. It can be done where you can enable these afterwards, but certain precautions need to be taken to make sure that your existing data is in the right domain. Otherwise, the reconciliation rule may not identify with the right domain with the information coming in. So please note that it, this is tricky to enable on existing instances and to take very great care in setting that up. The next feature that we have is for IHETL's mapped CI option. 
What this does is allows you to use the existing service graph connectors, for example, that is using IHETL to disable certain CIs from coming in altogether. Let's say you have multiple different sources and you choose to use one source as your master for new CIs and the other source maybe hasn't been updated with deleted CIs or archived CIs. So you can choose to have a master source only create those CIs and ignore the new CIs from a different source. Now the benefits here is that you can basically use the out of the box service graph connectors. You could just configure them slightly based on your preferences or needs how they work without having to go through and use all of the different CI types that are available in each connector. So you can pick and choose which ones make sense for your given situation. Another thing worth mentioning is with all of this new functionality, we've improved the logging for IHETL. We have a lot of customers that use these service graph connectors and they're creating these IHETL import jobs. With the additional troubleshooting tools, you'll be able to support you better. Uh, so you can debug what's going on or may not be going on appropriately. So just want to mention that. The next big feature that we have is the DSDM Product Model Association process. Now, what this is, is that in a typical CMDB, we have the ability to connect each CI to its respective product model. In the hardware and software space, this is kind of done by hardware and asset management and software asset management. Well, what, what happens to the logical items? Well, we don't have coverage for that. And a lot of organizations hadn't created the applications models or service models to map their CIs to. As we switch to a product-centric way of thinking and managing in IT, we want to make sure that we capture the product models first, ideally, and then the CIs come in as a representation of that particular product model in its lifecycle. So to prepare for this switch, we are investing in this area in terms of the logical CIs that basically aren't hardware and software, but more logical constructs that still need to go through a versioning and also a product-centric way of planning them. In this release, the product models that we're going to be supporting to create the product models where they don't exist for business services, technical services, service offerings, application services, and business applications. This is a job that needs to be enabled. Of course, the first time that you enable this, we will create quite a few product models where they may not exist already. And just a word of caution, if there are CIs that currently have the same name somehow, in the logical context, there may be some challenges in creating those product models. So they may map up to the same one, or they may create different ones. So you'll have to look at the results of the job and review the results and correct for the, some of those naming issues that you might have already in the CIs. The goal is to connect every CI to its respective product models long-term, and this is just one step along that journey. The next big feature that we want to talk about is the new dynamic calculated application service. So you might see this as calculated in some areas, dynamic in other areas. In the user experience, you'll see that the dynamic service is now available as one of the population methods for creating application services. Please note application services is in the user experience under CSDM. To create new application services, you go through a, a wizard and one of the steps is to choose the population method. Now, keep in note, this dynamic service is going to leverage your existing CI relationships to create the service. In our system, we have two ways of modeling. One is the seem to be dependencies and other relationship types that are between CIs. And the second method is really a service map. The service map is a more high fidelity mapping of a particular service and less a broad set of impacts that are managed within the CMDB as a whole. Customers who have manually invested in CMDB relationships to articulate their services will now be happy to know that they can see their same CI relationships in a service map particular to a application service. So this is gonna be a nice powerful feature. It was added actually in the Rome release, but added to the user experience here within the San Diego release. 
I want to also take a quick minute to look at how the application service wizard supports these different population methods and when to look at using one. Note that two of the population methods, the top-down discovery and the tags-based approach, are both require service mapping. Service mapping is part of our ITOM visibility, or you can buy it independently if you have an older SKU. When you're looking at different options, I think it's worthy to note that the best option is a top-down discovery. This really requires an entry point, which is typically a URL. And of course, when you do the top-down discovery, we will include any of the network devices or servers that are identified as we're traversing the different devices down into the lowest level that we can find. The next one is dynamic CI groups. It's noteworthy to say that this is basically a query. Now, this might be useful in a situation where you had a naming convention for servers, for example, that were named for particular applications. So you can create a query that has the server name in it and allow that to drive what the application service happens to be. This is more or less going to give you just an inventory of stuff and not necessarily understand how they're all connected. The next high fidelity is the tags-based approach. This works for public or private type cloud environments where you have applied tags. And in, in many cases, we can use those tags and understand the structures to put together a service map. So this is a, a good option if you have a large cloud environment and you're using tags currently. The next option is manual. This one really is a manual construction of the CIs that are in the service map. So the manual service requires selecting the CIs and no automation is really used. Um, I would suggest leveraging the dynamic service at wherever required as it is a little bit more intelligent with regards to how we process those dependencies and bring those into the service map. And uh, that's really the, the item that I covered previously. So uh, it is now on that population method in San Diego. And go ahead and leverage that where you have robust CI relationships already defined and want to use those. A couple of words to note. These will, in the background, stay up to date. So as you create or change the CMDB CI relationship types, the dependencies on the service map will also change and be reflected. Also. Interesting to note, when you set these up, you can specify how deep you want it to go. Is it five relationships or two relationships? So it really depends on how much manual work you've done or information that you've brought in from other sources and selecting how deep we want to go in those dependency relationships in order to build those service maps. So keep that in mind. And there's just one more noteworthy change I'd like to mention. And that is we've improved our IRE performance when importing data up to 14%. And that's been the average that we've tested out when we're actually working with a massive amount of data. And uh, the, the nice thing is that we continue to invest in the performance of the system. As customers scale and they get larger, they have more data sources, we recognize that we want to make things easier and more performant. And we have a continuous investment on the back end to make sure that the performance requirements for our customer base are met. Thank you for listening to this uh, brief update on what's new in the CMD and CSDM for San Diego.